Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com. Today we're gonna dig into the mixer, which is a big part of the experience of using Logic. Now, so far we got acquainted with how to set up our USB keyboard and our audio interface or USB mic so we can record into Logic. Next, we composed an idea very quickly using just the tools in Logic, which is super helpful. Then we fine tuned our performance using FlexTime and the other editors included in Logic. And now we're gonna start playing with the faders and the pan knobs and the different plugins. Of course, we have an eight bar loop here. You know, it's not a full song. And of course you probably wanna to get to a full completed song before mixing your project. Probably something more along the lines of like three, three and a half minutes. And that's totally fine. You can continue writing. If you just hover your mouse right next to your drummer regions, you can click on this plus symbol to add new sections of your drummer performance. And you can also hold option, click and drag your different audio regions or software instrument regions to duplicate, or you can just record and enable each track and just record a new section. The experience of using Logic for performance and recording is very intuitive, but at a certain point, you're gonna be done recording your parts and you're going to be ready to make some sort of adjustments in terms of levels, in terms of processing, etc. So let's take a look at the mixer. If we open the mixer, once again, using the button here that looks like a series of sliders, we have a view that looks very much like the region inspector here. And again, you can open the inspector using the I symbol. The inspector focuses on one track at a time. So if I select my drummer track, it updates to show me the fader level, the pan knob, and the plugin processing, and even the instrument or input section for the drummer region. So if I click on the instrument in the input section, we're shown drum machine designer. And if I select my audio region here, Instead, we have just an input section. There is no instrument because it's not a software instrument. And so we can either change or adjust the input or remove the input. For our piano track here, everything updates and we have some MIDI effects. We have our electric piano sound in the input section. And on our guitar track here, since that was an audio track that we recorded, we have the input that my guitar was plugged into on my audio interface, which happens to be input one. And then we have the plugins, the fader position, etc. Everything updates on a track by track basis. But the mixer is a more complete or holistic view of our entire project. Now, if you're looking at this feeling a little overwhelmed, I totally understand. It's not a big deal though. Just know that each one of these channel strips directly correspond with the different tracks in your session. So let's kind of collapse the view here. If I select the drummer track, we can see that's updated in the main window here. In the main window, tracks are called tracks, while in the mixer, they're called channel strips, because the channel strip will process the track in the main window. If I select the bass channel strip in the mixer, it selects the bass track lane in the main window, the guitar, and of course the piano track. Now down here, we have a couple of reverb auxiliary channels, and I'll explain those. But let's just hone in on the drums here. Now we can solo each track, like we mentioned before, we can mute each track as well. We're gonna solo, and I'm just gonna adjust the fader and the pan knob so we can get a sense for what's going on. The fader is a tool for adjusting the volume up or down for each track, while the pan knob adjusts the placement of the track from left to right. It's worth to point out that the drummer track that we're listening to is a stereo track. And you can tell it's a stereo track by watching the meter for the drummer track. There are two different meters that are being adjusted over time, a left and a right signal. Take a look. Where if we go to the guitar track here, this guitar track is in mono, which means one signal. And it's represented by the single meter here. I'm pointing this out because in the case of our guitar track, if I pan this to the left or right, the entire signal will move in that direction. Now in the case of our drummer track, the pan knob is a little different. It's called a balance knob. So instead of moving the entire signal to the left or to the right, it's actually, as we pull it to the left, it's muting the right side 
And if we pull it to the right, it's muting the left side. To change how stereo pan knobs work, if I right click or control click on the pan knob, we can change this from balance to stereo pan. And now you should see a green ring around the pan knob. Now when I pan this to the left or to the right, the entire drum sound will move to the left or to the right. And if you hover your mouse right above the pan knob, you should see the two handles of the green ring that are white highlight. And that means we can adjust the width of the stereo signal. So as I pull the handles closer to the center, this drum sound collapses into mono as if it were one signal. And as I pull the handles back out to the far ends, it widens out. Okay, so now I'm gonna start to balance my session. I'm gonna just adjust the faders and maybe the panning. Let's take a look. Okay, cool. Now we have a section of audio effects or plugins. And there's a lot to choose from in Logic. If we just go to the empty section here on the bass track and we click anywhere in this empty area, we have a whole lot to choose from. In your version of Logic, it will most likely start with amps and pedals. This provides us with the different tools for playing guitar and bass through Logic. Then we have delay effects, distortion, different dynamic processors such as compressors and noise gates, different EQs, filters, and so on and so forth. Now this may feel kind of overwhelming. The most typical processors that we use in Logic is EQ for adjusting the tonality of an instrument, compression for adjusting the dynamics of an instrument, and reverb to give each instrument a space in the mix. And if you go to the top of the mixer here, we actually should have a couple views. If you click on this empty EQ view, we can quickly open the EQ in Logic. On this meter here, if we click on it, we can open the compressor. And if we open the library using the filing cabinet here, we should see a variety of different options for adjusting the processing for our tracks. So in the case of my bass track here, I could dig into electric guitar and bass and look for a bass sound. Or if I'm looking for something more like a channel strip for processing my tracks, you can go through the different options here. So we have different options for vocals, performance patches, studio instruments. So I suggest poking around through the library because it should offer a lot of ideas or possibilities for processing your tracks. Now, the one other element that's really important to point out is sends, buses, and auxiliary channels. These very often can trip up beginner users in Logic. Now, a send is just like an entry point to a bus and a bus feed sound to an auxiliary channel. That's very complicated, right? Let's just select our piano track, and let's drive up the level on this particular send here. Now we should hear our piano track being sent to this reverb here. As you heard, as we adjusted the send level for our piano track, we were hearing more and more reverb. That's what sends, buses, and auxiliary channels are all about. Imagine the plumbing in your house. Water needs a way to get in and out of your house. If you imagine your tracks as a reservoir of water, the send is an entry point to a bus, and a bus is just the piping. It's piping to get sound around your project. In this case, send one, is sending to bus 106, which is sending to this auxiliary channel right here. So we're sending a parallel version of our piano track to a reverb that's not on the piano track. This opens up a ton of opportunity because we're able to process our tracks with reverb and delay and other effects without directly placing those things on our tracks. 
So we can send all of the tracks in my session to these two reverbs if we needed to. In fact, let's do that. So I'll select everything else, go to bus, 106 in this case, and then we'll dredge it up. To turn off a bus, simply hover your mouse over the left hand side of it and click the power button. And the same goes for plugins as well. So from faders to pan knobs to plugins to buses, sends and auxiliary channels, you have a lot of opportunity to balance and process your songs as you're composing them and they're taking shape. Now tomorrow, I'm gonna to show you once you're done composing and mixing your project, how to get it out of logic so you can send it off into the world. See you then.